Welcome to Wednesday, November 26, 2025, your day with a podcast brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, we can finally say, I think with a little bit better confidence that winter is finally getting going finally cranking up, at least in the western United States. Certainly over the last 24 hours, you saw a lot of winter in the Dakotas and the upper Midwest, and that's one part of the country that's going to get targeted again. But the western United States is finally going to start to see some colder weather. Now, moist northwest winds aloft will produce some mountain snow. Northwestern Wyoming will see some snow. Uh, the mountains, the Bighorns, even down into the southern mountains of Wyoming and far northern Colorado, we'll see snow showers today, and some of these will linger into tomorrow. If you're going to go over a mountain pass today into early Thursday, you will encounter a little bit of snow in those central and northern areas. Then the bigger change is going to be Friday into Saturday, and these are north to south changes. As the Arctic boundary pushes out of Canada into Montana, the northern Wyoming, the weather will change north to south. So keep that in mind Friday if you're traveling. The weather will be coming from the north. By Saturday morning, the frontal boundary will be all the way down pushing into New Mexico. So the changes will be developing then with falling temperatures, gusty winds, and there will be some snow. Another small system is going to overrun the cold air as we get into Sunday and Monday. We showed you this yesterday. There's going to be another redevelopment of snow after the initial surge Friday and Saturday, although the pattern will favor the southern areas this time. So when it's all added up, most of the Intermountain West is going to be a lot colder and we'll get some snow. Arctic fronts, unless there's a good overrunning component, just don't produce a lot of snow. So this is not going to be a huge snow event. But with the cold temperatures, the abrupt change that's coming, we're still going to have some travel concerns. And boy, that's really going to be true in other parts of the country. And we'll show you that here in a moment. Nice shot of a little fresh snow on Hart Mountain in northern Wyoming from that wave that came through earlier. Kelvin Helmholtz clouds. Yep, see that little wave action. When we get strong winds aloft from the northwest along and east of the divide, We'll get a wave function and a feature, and you'll get these wave formations that will sometimes show up like that. And that was showing up in Douglas yesterday. Sun Pillar from the Snowy Range in the World Track area of southern Wyoming. And here's some morning fog around Grand Junction with those colder temperatures at night finally coming on in. So now we're going to show you some contrast. Aaron, all the way in Alaska, sending this photo of boy, fleeting sunshine up there, losing it quickly. So we're going to get a little taste of this, but if you don't like this, I'll show you a picture of this from Florida. So we can kind of go back and forth, pick whatever we want, at least virtually. Satellite photo this morning shows the instigator of the bigger changes out here across the Pacific Northwest coast. Here's the low clouds and the very cold air that was associated with our system earlier this week that hit North Dakota in the upper Midwest hard with snowy, wintry conditions yesterday. Big lake effect snows, as we'll show you here in a minute. This is that fetch of moisture we showed you that was going to come in today from the Pacific Northwest. Northwest winds aloft with cold air aloft coming into the mountains will produce some snow along the mountain ranges today and tonight. We call this orographic snow, basically snow that just forms from colder, moist air being forced up and over the mountain ranges but you're really not going to get too much, maybe one or two snow showers on the plains. So when we see where we are this morning, that low off the coast of Washington and Oregon, that cold low into Wisconsin and Michigan there, we'll show you that here in a second, because it's going to be causing a lot of bad weather up here today in the form of harsh winter weather conditions, then eventually lake effect snow off of Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. We have winter weather advisories here for the Pacific Northwest for that strong northwest winds aloft going on. But you can see the center of the country here for today. We don't have many advisories in effect, but this cold Arctic core coming over the Great Lakes is just going to explode the snow. Look at portions of southern Canada, the UP of Michigan. These snowfall totals of one to two feet or more, I think, are certainly a real possibility. Then you can just see 
the classic lake effect. So this is going to be happening today, tonight, tomorrow. So this is basically over the next 36 hours in this part of the country. So that's going to affect airports from Minneapolis through Green Bay, then through possibly parts of Michigan, maybe even in the Cleveland area, then eventually New York State. That's where that system's going to be. Here's that northwest flow that's coming on in. And that northwest flow is going to be producing the mountain snow showers up in the mountains of northwestern Wyoming, western Montana, the Bear Tooth, the Bighorns, maybe even a little bit of snow shower activity here. It does show a couple of snow showers coming off the mountains as well. So kind of watch this. This isn't going to amount to much, but don't be surprised if later today, tonight, and Thursday morning, a couple of snow showers come off the mountains there and out into the plains. Again, the rest of the West, over the next 48 hours, nothing happening. That's what the snowfall looks like when that Northwest flow developing today. Then as we get into tomorrow, this is when things begin to change. We have the high building in Western Canada, the flow aloft starting to direct that colder air closer to us. And this upper level low right here is going to drop south like this and will drag the very cold air that's up here now into the lower 48 states. So this is Friday and this is by Sunday morning. A couple of things to note. Doesn't look like much, but there's a little wave right here. That's going to be the Sunday feature. But as the cold air comes in Friday, Friday night and Saturday, this is how the weather will evolve. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning. The weather changes north to south. So I'm going to step through six hour increments so you can kind of get the timing of the weather system coming in. So this is overnight Thursday, basically Thursday sundown to about midnight Thursday. So you can see the front is right along the Montana Canadian border. By Friday morning, the snow expands across Montana, getting further south, closer to the Wyoming border. By around noon Friday, we're probably going to be snowing on the Montana-Wyoming border, widespread light to moderate snows into Montana. And then once we hit Friday afternoon, that's when the front really starts to accelerate. So your, your travel opportunity for Friday is going to be early. In Montana, you're just going to have to be dealing with it. But if traveling across Wyoming, you're going to want to get an early start Friday because by Friday afternoon, the front is pushing south rapidly and then overnight Friday into Saturday morning. Again, this is not a big snow event, but you're going to see a huge drop in temperature quickly and that's going to cause the roads to become icy. Even if it's not a lot of snow, this is where the bridges and the exit ramps get to be a problem uh, when you're driving, driving quickly and all of a sudden you hit an icy bridge. And then by Saturday morning and then by noon Saturday, most of the snow's done, but the Arctic air pours in behind it. So this is the snow potential through Saturday, about midday Saturday. So you can see Montana is going to get the most of it down into the Dakotas as well. And just enough snow, not a lot, but enough to be a problem for traveling through Saturday morning into the mountains of Colorado. Then temperatures will be sharply colder. These are temperatures by midday Saturday and by Sunday afternoon, you can see the cold overspreading the area. The deepest cold will be in Montana over into the Dakotas, but you can see the blue gets west of the Continental Divide as well. Then I talked about another little opportunity for snow, and that's going to come with this wave right here during the day Sunday. We talked about overrunning. It's not very big, but it does look like some moist air over the Arctic air, which is funneling into the nation right here. This will produce a little bit of snow in the southern areas right here. So this is for Sunday through Monday evening. It doesn't look like a lot, but right along here, there's going to be another little snow event. You know, you can see the high country of Colorado is going to do well. Finally going to get some decent snow in the Wasatch to help out the ski areas, both in Utah and in Colorado. So traveling Sunday into Monday, we've got this little headache to worry about. Again, it's not big, but it's going to be enough to produce snow and icy conditions in the colder weather as it comes on through. So we have multiple events, not one event in this pattern change. Then if we take a look at the bigger picture through Monday morning, you can see the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes is really in the bullseye here. So across Interstate 90 and then Interstate 80 from Eastern Nebraska, whoa, look at Iowa, look at Illinois, along this stretch right here, 
If you have any flights that connect through Chicago this weekend, I apologize because by as early as Saturday, the snow is going to break out in this area right here. So you can see that a lot of the major airports in the south and east, there is going to be rain down here and some thunderstorms. So it's not to say that there won't be travel headaches down here through airports, but certainly take a look at Chicago. This is the snow potential this weekend from Iowa through Wisconsin into Southern Michigan, Northern Iowa, getting into Northern Indiana and parts of Ohio will be affected by this as well. Then next week, this map looks just like the map I showed you, but this is actually for Wednesday. So the Arctic reloads, we have another push of colder air and we have another push of Pacific moisture. So another opportunity Tuesday, Tuesday night and Wednesday for a similar event of similar magnitude will come in. So there'll be another one queued up next week to come on in. We will be updating our regional travel forecast today. I'll also have a podcast update for you tomorrow and we'll update the travel forecast again for you Thursday and Friday as well. Have yourself a good Wednesday. We'll talk to you on Thanksgiving.